actual American hostages sitting in Gaza right now under captivity of a terrorist organization. And we're supposed to equate the people sitting in jail who, uh, who rioted and attacked this capital, we're supposed to equate them with these hostages. Mr. Chairman, you continually say that it used to be that both parties agreed with the First Amendment. It didn't used to be. It is. Oh, it remains the case. It don't seem like We it. all agree it with the First Amendment. Like but the problem is that the First Amendment is not absolute. It does not protect any single thing anyone says. And there are limits, and that's important. And what this committee has been trying to do for the last year and a half oh, he's a demon. is to chill the federal government he's a demon. from monitoring what is going on on social media and, and otherwise out there so that misinformation and disinformation can run rampant in on Elon Musk's social platform and every other social oh, platform no. so oh. that they, the Republicans, can benefit oh, from it no. oh, in November's no. election. Time that is why this committee exists. The time, the time of the gentleman And we have smart. gotten no evidence to support any of these allegations. Well, the first question is, who's going to get to determine what's misinformation? Because the last time I checked, we can't even agree on what a woman is. So who's going to get to determine what's considered misinformation? And really what it comes down to is they just want to try to treat us like kids. There's always been snake oil salesmen throughout all of human history. And it was up to the individual person to to educate themselves or they get scammed and that's what i want to do i want to educate myself i'm a grown adult and i can i can find my own information i don't need the government to tell me what i can and what i cannot know that's crazy and i know all these social media platforms are technically private companies but let's just be honest most people communicate through social media nowadays if it wasn't so important why would they need to control it the fact that they're saying they need to protect us from misinformation on social media shows that they know that this is the place where most people communicate. And if this is a place where most people are going to communicate, you got to let people have conversations, even if people's feelings get hurt. In this very chamber, uh, they're not even hiding it anymore. They're saying the quiet part Facts. out loud. They want Facts. dependency. They want control. And the total disregard Facts. for the Constitution and the oath that many of my colleagues, actually all of my colleagues have taken uh, and violated, it's just... It's so disturbing to me. Many people know, probably as evidenced by what is on the, the face of, of my iPad, that I detest big government and I detest big tech. The two combined have proven to be a lethal combination when it comes to liberty and freedom. Agree. Agree. Because quite frankly, we know that the MO of big tech and big big financial institutions combined with big government, it's to erode and evade Americans' constitutional rights. And we're here today because of a blatant Fourth Amendment violation, where big banks colluded with big government to turn over data that didn't belong to them to target Americans, innocent Americans. Because in this country, it is still a fact that you are innocent until proven guilty, despite Facts. what everyone is trying to do and flip that around. Now, unless you're so a Dr. man Peterson, in family court, then you're guilty. You <laughs> you're guilty. On, I you, couldn't you help guilty but notice your reaction energy. when my colleague was talking about the First Amendment uh, not being absolute. And so I do want to give you the opportunity to, to weigh in and respond to that. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't help but notice your reaction. But before I do, I am really glad that you have been talking about the... Um, social credit system that the CCP, the, the Chinese Communist Party utilizes. I, I am literally around the corner in a classified briefing while right now talking about the use of big tech and how it is targeting uh, American citizens. In fact, this very morning, I have been inundated in my office with phone calls from TikTok users who have been denied access to the app because they live in my congressional district and until they call my office and demand that I do not take adverse action against the app, that they cannot use it. Talk about big tech wow. directing behavior. Wow. I think that we are on a very dangerous path. And Silence I want to give you people. my time to really lay out in the most succinct way possible the danger, the dangerous nexus of big tech, big government, and financial institutions that seek to weaponize that information against Americans. And I know you are more than capable of doing that in two minutes and 30 seconds. Well, I don't think people understand JP. the degree to which they are profiled JP. online and to which their virtual representation is now an iconic representation of them, nor do they understand that they have no rights whatsoever to that representation. So, for example, let's say we turn our 
information about our purchasing habits over to the bank when we open a bank account. 30 years ago, that wasn't such a big problem. With AI systems, it's a problem that's so big you can't imagine it. Facts. I mean, I'm Way certain different. that I, my staff could find the data online to absolutely predict your voting patterns with 95% accuracy. You have no idea what sort of digital footprint that you're, you're leaving behind you. And there are almost no protections for that. And so, now, and you also asked about the First Amendment. Yes. Well, we have very weak free speech protections in Canada, and I can tell you that is Thanks not going Canadian well. Canadian to come to talk and to so Americans the combination about in my country, the combination of that and the in invasive technology that we're producing at a rate that is beggars the imagination, um, produces a threat to the integrity of sovereign citizenship, the likes of which has not yet been experienced. Right? And that's what this committee should be concentrating on. Like, it's very interesting to watch it because it devolves continually into discussion of a, a, a particular event, serious though that event was. It's like, no matter how serious that event was, it pales in comparison to the potential severity of the issue that we're attempting to point to with regards to our testimony. The, these artificially intelligent systems can do things you can't imagine. Facts. And not only can they, they are and they will. And that will be abetted by the collusion between large corporations and government. And it's certainly the case that the people who stand on the left, especially with regards to their, what would you say, skepticism of large corporations, which is often, often perfectly warranted, should be utterly terrified about this. People have no idea how good these AI systems are at predicting human behavior, even the ones at Target. There's a story of this teenage girl who joined the rewards program at Target. They were sending her coupons through the mail for diapers, for like baby lotion, baby oil, baby clothes. And her dad was seeing him and he got upset because he thought the people at Target were trying to kind of manipulate or convince his daughter to get pregnant. So he took the coupons up to the store and was like, stop sending this stuff to my daughter. You know, y'all trying to get her pregnant. Y'all trying to convince her and, or influence her to get pregnant. And then two days later, he comes back and he apologizes. It turns out his daughter was pregnant the whole time. So before she even knew that she was pregnant, the artificial intelligence knew that she was pregnant based on what she was buying. And that's just Target. Imagine systems like Google. In less time than I thought. <laughs> well, I had to get it right once today. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And I think you have seen it front and center, certainly. We all watched in horror as the truckers' bank accounts were, were seized, yeah. were shut down, yeah. who protested the mandates. And... People think that that's such a faraway concept, but we have seen that here with people who have been given ultimatums of jab or job, and we've seen ways that they've been targeted and, and positioned in ways that are just un-American, unconstitutional. So thank you all to our witnesses for being here today. I people have to remember that throughout all of human history, there's always been pharaohs, kings, conquerors that wanted to take over the world. They build armies, they go north and kill everybody in that direction just because they wanted more power and influence. Those people still exist, they just own companies now. And these companies, they don't have any loyalty to any country, any constitution. Nazi Germany was a country the size of Nevada that wanted to take over the world and they almost did it. Genghis Khan conquered almost all of Asia on horseback. Now imagine if he had an iPhone. These people who want absolute power still exist, but now they have the technology to actually make it happen. Let me know in the comments below if this video was a W or a L and give me the HBO special. That's a help brother out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Till next time.